Today, I want you to realize that everything starts in the household. Let's talk about it. What's going on, Closer to God Ministries? Welcome back to another Righteous Spirit-Filled episode. Today, I hope to help you get closer to the truth, closer to the kingdom, and closer to the will of God. Hallelujah, amen. We gotta give him all the glory, all the praise, all the honor, because he is truly deserving of it. Man, today's message, I know is gonna go over a lot of your heads, but as the Holy Spirit is moving, you guys know how I come. I come straight up through the middle. Y'all about to get Mayweathered on both sides, men and women, because we got to do some work in order to uplift and get this thing back in order to bring real structure. Today's message is for all of my men and women out here. And today, I want you to realize that everything going on in the world, you know, that we see, that we see adults doing, it started off somewhere. So we got to get back to the point of origin. The point of origin is the household. It's how the parents chose to discipline, how they chose to parent, how they chose to bring up, to rear the children. I want to tell you something, you know, a monumental point in my life is when I was able to look at my kids and see their actions and know that I needed to change. Let me say that again. A monumental point in fatherhood and for me as parenting was for me to be able to look at my daughter, my two sons, see their actions not be pleasing to my eyes and know I need to change. Like I said, some of this is gonna go over your head. Men, I'm gonna start with you first. If you don't respect real authority, if you don't show reverence to the Most High, if you don't submit to God, then how can you assume that your children, your sons will grow up and do this? If you don't stand up as a man and make sure you don't present any kind of demeanor that is degrading to women, how can you, you know, assume that they're gonna grow up and be any different? As a man, if you jump from job to job and you can't hold down a steady job so you can provide, how do you expect your sons to be that kind of man? You're making assumptions, but you haven't taught them anything. Like I said again, when I look at my daughter, when I look at my two sons and I realize that when they do something that's not pleasing to my eyes, I recognize I need to sit down in the chair and reflect upon myself. How am I parenting? Because we expect our kids and we assume that they're going to grow up and do this. But if I don't set the good example, they're cut from the same cloth. They're going to grow up and be the same way, if not worse, and they're going to teach the same thing. And if they end up teaching nothing, if they don't have anything to teach as young men growing up into be adult men, chances are they're going to replicate the same thing. This is why, you know, everything starts in the home. Men, let me tell you this. Some of you guys do it very well when it comes to the workplace. You put on your uniform, you know, you do what you do from nine to five and you're good. You earn the bread, you earn the bacon and then you bring it home, but everything falls down in the household. When I talk about being a man and embracing and enjoying your manhood, this is 365. You don't get no days off. You don't get no days off. You shouldn't expect one because what you signed up for has a certain level of responsibility, a certain level of obligation, a certain level of attention to detail, a certain level of accountability. You see what I'm saying? And let you got a lot of you got a lot of fathers out here that don't take care of their, their household, don't take care of their kids. But on Father's Day, you can see them all on Facebook. You know, nobody said nothing to me. You shouldn't need no recognition because your head is Christ. When you please him, that's your reward right there. Okay, all my men out there, you can't set a bad example going against what manhood is outlined in the Bible and in scripture and think that you're going to get this righteous version that's cut from the same cloth of your seed and it's going to just be the blessing to the world. Doesn't work like that. Women, I want you to realize that in the household, if you are going against what is outlined in scripture, 
I don't want you to, I don't want you to ignorantly think that your daughters are going to grow up and be righteous, God fearing women. If you don't have a true fear of God, a true reverence of God, a true reverence of men, respect for men, your daughters are going to grow up the same way. The same nonsense that you say is the nonsense that they're going to speak because they're cut from the same cloth of you birthing life into them. Their, your DNA is a part of them. You should be able to look at your daughter and if her actions aren't pleasing to you, you should be able to say, dang, I need to do something as a mother. You know, like I said in other videos, I can't as a man, I can't tell my son not to do something that I'm showing him how to do. As a woman, if you're not showing your daughters how to be modest, how to show reverence, how to be meek, how to be submissive, how to be soft, supple, if you're not showing them that, how can you think that they're going to be, you know, God's blessing to the world if you haven't put anything into them? This is where all of the foolishness starts from in the household. Men, if you don't teach your sons from a young age to be righteously accountable, if you don't teach them leadership, if you don't give them the opportunity to actually lead small tasks in the house, how can they ever learn it? How can they ever learn it? Women, if you're not teaching your daughters according to scripture righteously, you can't be surprised when she goes out here and the same thing that happened to you happens to them. But yet we make these assumptions and we say, I don't know, I don't know why, you know, they turned out like this when I did everything I was supposed to do. No, you didn't. You didn't do anything hard because I'm telling you on Mother's Day and on Father's Day, everybody has their hand out. But how many of you, you know, are saying, hey, I don't need that recognition because I know my actions are pleasing to God. I know that I even have work to do on this day. It's not a day off. It ain't no day off. We're putting in work because, you know, I think about my two sons and my daughter. I got to put them into this world and I got to give them resources and tools that are going to be beneficial in their life. The tools of the world ain't going to serve no purpose. See, let me get back. Like I said, men, we know how to get in the workplace, do what we need to do. But when we get home, the structure falls down. We don't have patience. We don't have real love. We just like, ah, you know, it's too difficult. But it's going to take some time. And if you give up and you look for the exit sign, you're never going to get there. Women, here we go. The only time a lot of women know how to be meek, modest, submissive is in the workplace. Because there's a pecking order, just like there is in scripture. Christ is the head of man, man is the head of woman, and the kids fall up under the authority of the parent. But when something goes wrong in the household, it's the father's fault because he is the head of the household. And that's what leaders do. Women, if you are not showing your daughters what it means to be God-fearing, righteous women, you're just showing them how to be free spirits what do you expect? There's a spirit out here of people saying, I don't know how this happened. You got little boys and little girls that are getting molested and raped in the home and the parents know about it, but you know, they don't know how to deal with it because they haven't dealt with it because it happened to them. See, there's a, there's a, there's a, a method to the madness in getting deliverance, being able to rebuke this stuff. And I know how it is to live the life of a free spiriting man. You see what I'm saying? I know how to recognize the spirit of a free spirit woman because you don't fall up under no authority, no structure, no discipline, no order. But yet you assume and expect everything is going to work itself out and it's just going to be this fairy tale. But when you look at the reality of the world, it ain't no fairy tale out of here. You got a lot of people that's lost, a lot of people that have given up on trying to make this thing work when I'm giving you the answers. You see what I'm saying? In order to embrace being a man, being a father, being a mother, being a woman. This comes by way of having the gift of the Holy Spirit, moving according to the Holy Spirit, going to God, the one that gives you peace. You see what I'm saying? You can't do it on your own. You are going to fail. You're going to fail. And let me, let me kick it up a notch. See, men, I want you to realize that your daughters are going to go out and they're going to find you in the world because they soaked in you and they're going to go out and search for that because that is the standard that they look for. If you've shown them nothing more than how to be a disrespectful man, you know, not provide for your family and embrace it, not to take care of the household, not to show leadership, accountability, reverence to the most high, having a relationship with God, chances are your daughters are going to go out there and they're going to find this exact same man. 
And when it's chaotic, when it's problematic, you're gonna be sitting there scratching your head. This is the reason why I say it starts in the household. Women, I want you to understand that as mothers, if your sons don't see God-fearing woman, don't see a righteous woman, chances are they're gonna go out and they're gonna find the same thing and they're gonna have the same problems. It starts in the household. If they see you not modest in the household, see you not meek in the household, see you not reverencing the husband, having any respect for real authority, your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, what do you think that they are going to search for in a woman out in the world because you set the standard? You can't blame the world for the standard that you set. It starts in the household. If you want to fix anything, you got to fix yourself. And I'm talking about, I'm talking about looking at your kids, seeing something that's not pleasing to you and sitting in that chair of accountability and saying, dang, I got to fix me. I got to fix me. The reason I say this thing starts in the household because it's going to take a lot of love. It's going to take a lot of patience. But most importantly, it's going to take a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because there's a natural spirit in us that started in the garden with Adam and Eve that loves to rebel, that loves to go against the will of God. And you have to be able to recognize that in your kids so you can rebuke that spirit, so you can stand there as a mother, as a father, and hold them accountable for it. Teach them the ways righteously. Teach them how to be God-fearing men and women. But if you don't, if you don't have the spirit in you to deal with yourself, you can't deal with nobody else. And your kids is just going to grow up lawless under no authority, knowing no structure, no discipline. But this is what we see. This is what we see. If we're going to restore the heritage, if we're going to truly uplift the kingdom and do something pleasing to God, this is what it's going to take. See, I tell you, I hit different. My jazz comes straight up through the middle on both sides. And one thing, one thing I realized is there are going to be people out there. They're going to see this message and they're going to be like, I don't like it. I don't like it. But it ain't about what you like. It's about what you're willing to do. What you don't like don't make nothing better. It's about what you're willing to do. Are you, are you going to take heed to the solution that God has already given us via scripture? Because if you're not, your comments, your arguments don't mean nothing. You just, you just exercising feelings and emotions, but the rebelliousness in us, the spirit that loves sin is feelings and emotions. Well, I feel like I should be able to do it. I emotionally think this way. That's a feeling in itself, an emotion in itself that will make you go against the will of God. The Holy Spirit has to be with you so you can rebuke these feelings and emotions. Men and women, y'all don't hear me out here, man. Y'all don't hear me out here, man. That was 12 rounds. That was 12 rounds, a non-stop uppercuts, jabs, haymakers coming straight up through the middle. You guys just got Floyd Mayweather. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. Check out the link in the description because I'm only shooting at gun barrel straight. Bow.